Hello, I'm going to show you how to make this Jurassic Park cake with a realistic dinosaur eye. We're going to start by making the eye. Use a bowl of white fondant. Shape it, leaving the back flat to press against the cake, but curving the front. I'm not using gum paste or adding Tylose powder because I want my fondant to stay soft, since it's going to be part of the cake and it will end up being attached to someone's slice. When you're happy with the curve, Use a round cookie cutter or a sharp knife to tidy up the edges and then put it on a piece of parchment paper or wax paper to paint it. To make the pupil, roll black fondant as thin as you can and use a pizza cutter to cut a very narrow slit so the eye looks really mean. With a wet paintbrush, brush a line down the centre of the white fondant and then stick on the black pupil. Now to paint the eye, make a glaze with equal parts of vodka and glucose. I've used one tablespoon of each, which is plenty. You can see the glucose is thick and the vodka isn't mixing well with it, so I'm microwaving it for 15 seconds to loosen up the glucose and make the glaze more liquid and easier to work with. This is much better. It's mixed together now. You could use corn syrup instead of glucose. Put a few drops of gel food color on a plate. I'm using orange, red, black, and yellow. Dip a paintbrush into the glucose glaze and then into one of your colours to make a coloured glaze. Mix all of your colours with the glaze, using about the same amount of colour as glaze. Start painting with your lightest colour and get gradually darker. I'm starting with yellow, going all the way up to the pupil on both sides. Now orange, dabbing my paintbrush onto the fondant to blend the colours gradually and to apply the colour in different amounts so it's realistically shaded. Red next, dabbing it on all around the edge of the orange. This glaze stays shiny even after it dries. Depending on how thickly you paint it on, it'll dry anywhere between 30 minutes and a day later. After you've painted the glaze on and it dries, don't paint over the top again because you'll leave brush strokes on whatever you've already painted. Brush the black pupil with plain glaze, not adding any black colour, because you don't want the colour to bleed into the coloured parts of the eye. Dip your paintbrush in the glaze, and then the black gel colour, and now dab around the rim of the eye. Now with just the glaze without any colour, I'm dabbing to blend the colours better, making sure there's still a bit of yellow visible around the pupil before the orange starts. I've rolled out some green fondant, about an eighth of an inch thick, just thick enough to work with, and this is going to be the eyeball. Leaving the eye on the wax paper so the colour doesn't smudge, indent the shape of the eye and then move the paper and cut the eye out. You can use white instead. I'm just using the same fondant I'll use to cover my cake. I'm taking the centre away to reduce the amount of fondant I'm going to stick onto my cake. I'm arranging the sides around the painted part of the eye, pushing them together to form the eye. Now with green gel colour mixed with your glucose glaze, paint the outer part of the eye to make that nice and glossy. To make the eyelids, roll out some fondant thinly, maybe an eighth of an inch thick. I'm using more of the fondant that will cover my cake, but you could use white instead. To give the dinosaur skin a scaly texture, I'm using a non-slip mat laying it on the fondant and then rolling over it to impress the pattern into the fondant. You can use anything with a grid texture like this. Bubble wrap would probably work well too. Trim your fondant so it's a bit bigger than the eye you've made. Then fold it back and forth a few times to make the folds around the eye, pinching the ends together. Curve the folded fondant over the eye, arranging it to cover the top part of the eye. Trim the ends and then do the same with the bottom of the eye. Make a palette of different shades of green by putting a few drops of green gel food colour onto a plate and then mixing some of the green with yellow and some with brown. Add a bit of vodka, about a tablespoon, and then brush the fondant around the eye. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for new cake decorating tutorials every week. If you prefer, you can paint the fondant folds before arranging it around the eye but you'll have to paint over it again where you touch it and smudge the paint. When you do the inner part of the eyelid, 
angle your brush so you don't touch the coloured part of the eye, and move around to look at it from different angles to make sure you've painted over every part of the fondant. Keep building up the colour, adding a few layers to cover the whole surface. Because your palette has a few colours, parts of the eye will have hints of yellow or brown, and the whole eye won't be the same shade of green. Leave the eye to dry for a while so it will hold its shape when you transfer it onto the side of the cake. Don't leave it for longer than about an hour, because if it starts to harden, it will crack when you bend it to curve around your cake. If you accidentally touch the painted eyeball with your green paintbrush, dip a clean paintbrush in the glucose glaze and brush lightly over the stain to remove it. Cover your cake with fondant, or buttercream if you prefer. I'm sponge painting my cake to camouflage my eye. Check out my tutorial on sponge painting cakes by clicking the link at the top of the screen or in the description below. The link for my tutorial on how to stack a tear cake is in the description below as well. Now brush your cake with water where you're going to put the eye. Press the eye against the cake and manoeuvre it to be in the position you want. If you angle it so that one side is lower than the other, the eye will look meaner. You can touch up any smudged colour with your paintbrush now. I'm cutting out some leaves, just freehanding it with a pizza cutter. I'm pushing the leaves into a leaf veining impression mat, and now I'm brushing it with green food colouring mixed with alcohol, the same colours I used for the dinosaur's eyelid. I'm placing the leaves around the eye, as if the eye is poking out of the rainforest. Water makes the leaves stick to the cake, even when it's sponge painted. Where you touch the leaves and rub off the paint, just brush over them again with your paintbrush dipped in the mixture of green colour and vodka. Now for the final touch, I'm making the Jurassic Park logo. I'm rolling red fondant as thin as possible and cutting out a circle with a cookie cutter. Now I'm using an edible black marker to draw on the dinosaur silhouette, using the tip of the marker for the intricate details, and then the side of the marker to fill in the head and the body. I'm cutting out a piece of the circle where the writing goes, and then sticking the rest onto very thin black fondant. I'm just using water on a paintbrush to stick the red and black fondant together. Cutting out a rectangle for the writing, and trimming around the circle, using my knife to cut roughly around it, and then using the side of the blade to curve the circle. And now I'm cutting the letters Happy Birthday out of white fondant, which I'm going to put where the original logo says Jurassic Park. You can find the Jurassic Park font on Google, and I'm copying the shape of the letters of that font, making sure they're all the same height, and using my black edible marker to draw lines down the middle of the letters. And there they are! I'm brushing my black rectangle with a bit of water and then sticking the letters on, starting with the outside letters and working my way in to make sure everything fits and is centred nicely. Now the whole thing goes on yellow fondant, which I've rolled thick enough to fit a wooden skewer in the middle to support it when I put it in the cake. Just like before, I'm cutting roughly around the circle and then smoothing the curve with the side of my knife blade. I'm pushing my wooden skewer carefully in, being careful not to angle it up or down because then it might poke out of the fondant. I measured the height of the top tier and cut the wooden skewer so it's the same height and then just pushed it in and ta-da! Thanks for watching! Please subscribe for new cake decorating tutorials every week.